Ahoy there, YouTube. I'm back once again for another game review, and today I will be reviewing Torches and Pitchforks by Green Ronin Publishing, the card game of Monster Movie Mayhem. It is for two to five players, ages 12 and up. It'll take you about 30 to 60 minutes to play, and as you can probably tell by the box or the name or the little tagline, this game is all about the evil monsters from the classic movies and the villagers that want to kill them. As you can tell, the artwork for this game is very well done. I love the artwork for this game. Looking at the front, you can see the, uh, the nice little Frankenstein monster and the werewolf and all the little villagers in the back. Taking a look at the back, it's in black and white, and it's very simple. Let's have a look inside the box and see what's in there. Alright, inside the box you are going to get a bunch of cards. This is a completely all-card game. You're also going to get a rule book, and I must say the rule book is fantastic. It is 21 pages and it is incredibly informative. It covers every aspect of the game that you could need. It's very pretty and aesthetically pleasing to look at, and it tells you exactly what cards are included. Now, you're also going to get cards. Bunches and bunches of cards. You're going to get what are townsfolk's cards. These are the people in your village that are going to help you kill the monsters to win the game. In order to win the game, you're going to need to get 30 points. So the first person with 30 points is going to win this game. All the townsfolk's cards are the exact same. They all have different pictures and they all have different titles, but they all just give you plus one. So there's nothing really too interesting about the townsfolk's cards. You're also going to get monster cards. These are what you're going to be fighting. They have in there action cards, which will affect you and other players. For instance, this one is termite infestation. All players lose torches and pitchforks. Or they also have monster cards, like this level 6 zombie. And when we're looking at this card, you can see it has a 6 and a 1 right here. The 1 is if you lose, how many of your villagers are going to get killed, and the 6 is how many points you get and how strong he is. So the first person to get 30 of these points wins the game. The other cards you're going to have are mob cards. And to start the game, you're going to deal out 5 cards to each person. So I dealt myself 5. And I have some interesting cards in here. I have an additional townsfolk I would be able to play. I have a, call, a one called a Stragglers, which means some people are going to join me in combat later on and help me. I have a Grenade, which is an extremely interesting card, which means if I roll a 6, my villager instantly dies, but if I roll a 4 or 5, I kill any monster, no matter how strong it is. So there's numerous different mob cards, and the mob cards really make the game fun. So, I've dealt out five mob cards to myself. I have my six townsfolk. I am ready to play a couple hands. Oh, one more card, which I love when game producers put in here, is the little cheat sheet, which you will need when you first start the game. It is very helpful and very useful. It shows the order of play. So, first you're going to draw five cards. You always have five cards. Then you're going to attack. When you attack, a monster is going to get flipped, and we have a level nine vampire. So let's go ahead and deal with this vampire we have right here. He is doing 9 damage. Since I've just started the game, I only have 6 townsfolk. I'm not going to be able to beat him, no matter what I do pretty much, because I don't have the cards to help me. So what I do now is I run away from this vampire. So what I'm going to do is going to take my dice. And this is one thing I did have a problem with the game. There is no dice included. So that's a little annoying, but whatevs. So, I've got a three. So, in order to do this, I am going to have to discard three of my cards. So, I will get rid of get rid of stragglers and two other cards. So, now I'm down to two cards, but I've safely escaped from the vampire. None of my villagers are dead. Now, if I would have rolled a six and I couldn't get rid of any of these cards, well, what would have happened is... I would have had to have fought him. I would have lost, and one of my villagers would have been killed, which means I would have flipped them over. Also, you need to read on the cards, because this vampire has a special ability. This vampire says that whichever of my villagers is strongest and has the most item or enhancement cards is going to die. Normally you get to pick which one dies, but this one would kill whichever one is the most powerful. Luckily, none of them have anything on them. So. Now you're going to take this, you're going to put it into the center here. This is called the Moor. 
Whenever you can't defeat a monster, a monster flees or gets away, it goes into the center, and you have the option during the hunt phase to try and attack him. If you draw one of those event cards we talked about that said uh, all your torches or pitchforks goes out, then you can't obviously fight a monster. So then you can go through the moor and draw one random card and try and fight it. So, after you've fought your monster, you have what's called the recoup phase. This is where you can start to play your nice item cards down. So I held on to two cards. I held on to Officer Dave, which is another villager I could play. So now I have seven villagers. And I held on to my grenade, which I'll set right there. So everyone would take a turn. I have no cards left. But when it comes back to my turn, I would draw first. I would draw five new cards. So I'd go one, two, three, four, five. And then I would flip over a monster. And this time I am facing a level five killer bug. So it's going to give me five points if I kill it. And if I don't kill it, it's going to kill two of my villagers. Luckily for me, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a grenade, which I won't even need to use. I can lay that down and I can say, all right, I'm going to fight this killer bug. Now, with some of the mob carvers, other players will have the opportunity to increase this killer bug to make it more powerful. I also have the ability to make my villagers more powerful. And therein lies a very fun part of the game. When someone, when you have two or three players trying to make this killer bug into something extremely deadly, the game can get very hectic. But luckily for me, I would easily kill this without having to use my grenade. So I would put this to the side in my scoring pile, and I would be five points closer to winning the game. Other than that, the game is incredibly simple. You just go around, and the first person to 30 points will win the game. If you run out of mob cards, don't worry. You just shuffle them back in there and keep playing. It's a very, very simple game, despite the fact the rulebook is very, very wide. It just covers every aspect of the game. Torches and pitchforks. What's my final impression? I'll go over the pros and the cons real quick. The, on the negative side, I was a little bit disappointed when I opened the box and found out it was black and white. The artwork on the front was fantastic, and not to discount the artwork, but I was expecting color, and it was black and white, but that's a little bit of a nitpick. The next one, the die. There should be a die in your game if you, if you need a die in your game. This die would probably cost you 10 cents at the most. If you buy them in bulk, about 5 cents. So the fact that there's not a die included really kind of grinded my gears a little bit. Another little nitpick I had, and this is more of a house rule kind of thing, is if you play with two players, it's fun, but it does end extremely abruptly, and it's way too short. So if you play with two players, I would highly recommend going to 50 or 60 points. On the pro side, despite the fact it's in black and white, the artwork is fantastic. I can't stress that on that. I love the artwork. I love the picture on the monster cars, and the towns folks, and the mob. All the artwork is very, very well done. The manual is also extremely well done, as I mentioned. Another great factor of this game is, it's very cheap. I was lucky enough to find mine for $4. So overall, I would recommend Torches and Pitchforks. It's a fun little game, and if you can find it for the cheap, go ahead and treat yourself and pick this game up. Thanks for your time, YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe to my page. Thanks. That was the review for Torches and Pitchforks. For other reviews, check out Bowers Game Corner.